I'm Glenn McGuinness, and this is Outburst. On this program, why is this election important to you? Well, as with any election, it's important to have our voice. It's time for change. It's a pivotal time where we can go one way or we can go another. Because it could potentially uh, determine how we're going to be living in the next five to ten years. But first, just shy of two years since Canadians last went to the polls, here we go again. In October of 2019, Canadians elected a Liberal minority government. And now, some critics will tell you the reason Prime Minister Justin Trudeau called this election was an attempt to secure another majority. A minority government requires parties to work together to come to a consensus on any given issue, while a majority government allows a governing party to move ahead with their agenda without consulting the opposition parties. So, as we move towards September 20th, we posed this question to Canadians. Would you prefer a minority or majority government? That's a tough question because it really depends on how well they're doing. I mean, a majority government has the opportunity to uh, get things done in a far more efficient uh, way and to pass things. But a minority government seems to have a little more conscience because they're being held accountable. So it, I think that's a really tough question to answer, either one or the other. I like a change of government, first and foremost. Whether well, that's a minority or majority, it doesn't really matter to me. But it's hard to say in this political climate. I, it's like you're damned if you, damned if you don't. I'm not a big fan of Trudeau. I don't know, it might be an unpopular opinion. I like what he tries to stand for, but he doesn't really follow through with a lot of the action that he says, or sorry, the words that he says. Uh, definitely a minority government, because then in that case, um, every person's decision, every person's vote would count more so than in a majority election. Majority election is just um, the majority rules, and that to me, for lack of a better term, uh, leads to majority, leads to a dictatorship, which is not what I want to see. It's difficult to say. Minority governments have always achieved great things, apparently, in the past. Uh, I'm typically in favor of a majority and the buck stops here type of situation where someone has the authority uh, to rule, if you will, uh, and uh, not be hampered or, or have their hands tied uh, by having to cater to minority parties. So I, I think I, I would lean towards wanting a majority rather than a minority, even despite some of the uh, history that min minority governments have, have proven to be very uh, successful. Depends who who's winning, right? <laughs> if, it, if it's the party I like, then uh, I probably want them to have more power. If it's a party that I don't particularly want in power, I'd probably want a minority. Um, I think I think I would take a minority government if it meant that we had more voices being heard and we were not uh, a borderline two-party system. Yeah. I think majority for me, for sure, just. It seems in minority governments, things don't really get done as uh, effective as we would hope. Presently for myself, I think a minority, I think things are so polarized in each way, I wouldn't like someone to take control that way. So I like the ability to, a, minor, a minority government just to have some check and balances. And I think majority government because it's easier to get things done usually, so. I know minority governments are better, but you know what I dislike about Canadian politics is we've gone, the opposition always just opposes anything. It, they, 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 they should be oppose the things that they really oppose and, and keep their mouth shut about the other things. And I really find, you know, that this is what we've become. We've become, the opposition just is there to oppose everything. Oh, a minority government, no question. Uh, when you're dealing with a majority government, you only hear really one voice, which honestly, with the election numbers that we currently have, if we're lucky to get 50% of the population out to vote, you're getting 51% of the population that voted. So like 26, 27% of people actually getting their voices heard. With a minority government, you're getting compromise that has to be made. So you get the most amount of Canadians getting the most amount of things that are gonna make them happy without feeling like they're getting completely railroaded. Majority. And why is that, sir? Because then they can actually enact their program. And uh, otherwise, it just ends up in a, in a, in a big, uh, endless muddle, right? And they end up compromising too much and, and messing about, and they don't get anything done. I don't want a majority. 
The reason for that is that I think it keeps the government in line and it stops them from overspending, although they spent quite a bit during the pandemic. Really, parliamentarians need to set an example for the rest of Canadians. They are our voice. They are our leaders. Get together, guys. Let's see minority governments elected, but let's see them work, and let's hold our politicians to account. If people are going to call elections after we've elected them, throw them out. Elect someone new who can get along. I think I would prefer a majority as long as it's a good government for everyone, if that makes sense. I think minorities can actually work pretty well, actually. Um, you know, we've had a minority government in the federal uh, government for the last while, and there's a degree of balance there, and, you know, you can't get those extreme swings. And I think there's plenty of instances in, in Europe, for example, where that works pretty well. Uh, you've got some sort of coalition or some sort of... Uh, some sort of trade-off between different uh, political parties to continue to govern and I think that's a healthy debate so I'm not against minorities at all in fact I think they can probably work perhaps better than majorities in some cases it depends. A uh, majority to get things done probably because otherwise there's too much dithering and um, things go nowhere or they get blocked and I don't think that's effective at all. A uh, minority. Why? There's more uh, uh, ability for the opposition to uh, make influence influence the decisions of the of the government that's been elected in definitely a minority um, I would prefer um, representation like not first past the poll like Trudeau promised he was going to do um, but since we don't have that I would I prefer minority election because it maintains a better balance of interests from all, cr all across the spectrum in Canada. Motivating people to get out there and vote is not as easy as it sounds. Voter apathy in past elections has been apparent with low voter turnouts. The lowest ever was back in 2008 when only 58.8 percent of Canadians showed up at the polling stations. Some countries have made voting the law, which may help boost those numbers up. But what more can we do here in Canada to inspire our citizens to exercise their democratic right on Election Day? Our question. What would encourage more people to vote? I think the things that would encourage more people to vote would be uh, to get to the bottom points of, like, um, you know, our fuel prices, jobs, economy... Um, you know, the current situation we're in as a province. I personally believe where I am in the oil and gas fields and stuff like that, I think uh, more focus needs to be done on that as a province, knowing that it is the backbone of our community and, you know, all the spin-offs that come from it, so. Compulsory voting, like they do in Australia, with a very minor fine if you don't vote. And I think I guess I would add to that is relevance of what politicians are talking about and that has to be relevance to all generations. I think if there was more transparency and honesty what's going on in all, all parties, there's so much uh, dissent, even, even among parties themselves, I think people just don't really care anymore. First of all, I think a better leader, if we, we, need, to, we need better leaders of all parties. Uh, leaders that are strong and uh, sincere in what their what the plan is for the country. Uh, I think a lot of people feel alienated by the um, by the voting process, but also by democracy and by government, and they don't necessarily see the relevance of those issues to them. Um, so I think when people choose not to vote, it's not necessarily that they don't care. I think they need to be more properly engaged, and they need to. Um, I think that politicians and candidates need to do a better job relating themselves and the issues to a person's meaning, a person's day-to-day -day life. Um, why should I care about these issues and why should I go to the trouble of voting? Um, so I think that more engagement and meeting people where they're at would be really effective in getting more people out to vote. Teach them about it at school from the beginning, from since they're kids, probably, because now it's kind of hard if you don't know. And immigrants, it's important to include us also in, with the knowledge. Sometimes they feel that they're not being heard. Yes, we're voting, but nothing. we're not going to get anything out of it, right? Yeah, so that's... If they're being heard, uh, they need that uh, assurance that people are listening, the leaders are listening to them. 
and listening to what they want. Maybe having better candidates. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a good answer, but that's, I think that would encourage me to uh, vote federally, to know more about the candidates and have ones that are maybe different from the last, the last election. Um, make it more accessible, lengthen the hours, make it easier for people to engage, get engaged, give, send out information. Like always, the more you send out, the more engaged, hopefully, especially the younger people will get. I don't go out and vote because I have no idea who I'm voting for. Yeah, and what I'm voting for. Uh, I wouldn't want to encourage more people to vote. I would want to encourage people to become educated about the issue so that they have a drive and desire to vote. Oh, everybody should vote. I mean, voting is a right of citizenship, so people must vote, whether, however they vote. You gotta, you know, you gotta exercise your, uh, your power. Ah, uh, I think accessibility. Honestly, having, uh, having more polling stations would be great. Uh, I, th I think also like familiarity with candidates, that's a big thing. I know sometimes I go to stations and I'm not 100% sure who I'm voting for. I just know kind of the, the popular thing to do. Or, um, so that's important to me to have, have like a good sense of who I'm voting for. Um, also the values of the party a little bit more accessible as well. I think that's the main thing is just accessibility. That's a good question. I don't know how you can get everybody there. I really don't. But, but I think as Canadians, we all need to have a bigger voice in what's happening because there's a lot of change right now and it's not all good change and it's not good for all Canadians and it should be. We haven't been getting the explanation from our politicians, from our government. It's been a top-down approach and often we're left confused as to why things are happening. Confused and angry and then not wanting to engage and that needs to change. If you want good government, you, you have to get out and vote. If you don't get out and vote, you have no right in, in complaining. This is this what it all comes down to. Um, integrating the new generation also with the older generation. And um, not just uh, provincially, but uh, federally um, throughout this whole country. Any old government that has any say should have the people's vote. If the people aren't voting, the companies are voting, that means the people aren't getting what they want. I think it's important to vote because otherwise you, you don't have any say on anything. If you don't like the decision of, uh, of um, the, the Prime Minister uh, and then you don't vote, then it doesn't count. And if you like what he does, you should, you know, vote as well. Generally speaking, uh, clarifying party policy, uh, giving the people a, an opportunity to to uh, give them feedback and uh, just transparency more than anything else I would say. If they're not happy with the way things are going this is their chance to make a change. How many women were elected to Parliament in the 2019 federal election? Is it 68, 78, or 98? 98. 68. 78. 68. 68. 78. Not, yeah, I'm thinking high. option two. I couldn't give yeah. you the exact number, let's go but. 78. 78? 78? Let's go with 78. Uh, 98. It is 98. You got it right. Great. It was a guess. Good for you. Thank you. The number of women elected to Parliament in the October 21st, 2019 federal election was 98. In contrast, 88 women were elected to Parliament in 2015. In total, the number of women who ran federally for all parties in 2019 was 646 nationwide. When the votes were counted, the breakdown of elected women MPs per party in the House of Commons were as follows. 52 for the Liberals, 22 for the Conservatives, 12 for the Bloc Québécois, 9 for the NDP, 2 for the Green Party of Canada, and 1 Independent, setting a record for female members elected to Parliament. When people choose which federal party they'll vote for in a federal election, oftentimes it's the federal party leader who will play a part in that decision. The leader is the face of the party and a potential leader for the country. 
We sent our cameras out to ask Canadians what characteristics they're looking for in those who are leading the charge, no matter what political banner they're running under. Our question. What qualities do you look for in a party leader? So to me, I want a party and a leader that aligns with my values in terms of, you know, I've got a young family, mm -hmm. education, uh, social services are really important to me. Mm -hmm. So I look for leaders and parties that align with those priorities for me. Honesty, accessibility, and willing to take a stand on an issue, not flip-flopping. I like knowledge on a broad base of topics and, and a willingness and an ego that isn't so um, well developed that it doesn't know to ask for, for help from experts that do know and, and can change their mind and, and make it acceptable for people to change their mind. I like that kind of a tone from a leader. Honesty, and I think that is one reason a lot of people don't vote is that's awfully hard to find. Honesty, openness, integrity, keeping your word. Um, and not just, you know, speaking to say what people want to hear, but actually acting upon what you're saying. If they can defer to someone else who has more um, experience or knowledge in an area, that to me says that they're a better leader. So um, I guess I look for, yeah, them to say, I'm not perfect, I don't know everything. Um, here's someone who does, and I'm going to take their lead. Definitely to be understanding of what the people want, that's for sure. It's not only about... Um, the politics side of it. You have to have the votes from the people, so you need to look for what they want to have. In a political leader, I would really like someone that is honest, that is grounded, that can see both sides of everything, and that is open, and not just locked into uh, the, his side. He has to be open to thought for whatever anyone has to offer, and it has to be for the good of the country. Well, someone who's honest, uh, you know, uh, has uh, an agenda and tries to stick with it. I would think those would be the, the two that were important to me. I think just uh, someone who is not superficial, uh, who's not concerned about getting uh, re-elected, uh, who's, who really cares about human rights, um, and uh, is willing to, uh, to make the real change that's necessary. Uh, and not just be focused on being re-elected and being liked and keeping with the status quo. I think uh, integrity is, is the main thing. Um, uh, transparency is something else as well, um, as well as you know, the ability to lead in difficult times. So um, I think all of those things are important and I think some sort of empathy as well with uh, what people are going through. I think it's been really important in the last well, 18 months uh, thereabouts with COVID. I think that's, that's, that really matters. That people feel there's a sense of care there and duty that the government has to them. So yeah. Uh, somebody who's intelligent, empathetic, a proper leader, so somebody who actually listens to what other people are saying, somebody who's willing to step back and see the big picture and isn't focused on the economy or money, they're actually focused on the people of their country and listening to them. Well, I'm a young person, so I definitely look for somebody who is has my interests in mind, such as you know, student debt um, is something that is important for me and a big factor that is going to play a big role in my life. So things such as student debt, um, as a young adult, I also look towards the housing crisis um, that's going on in Hamilton and throughout the GTA, so that is important to me as well. And just a politician that has my best interest in mind, I definitely look for. I suppose uh, someone who's able to balance a lot of issues at the same time. It's not an easy office to have, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, that's kind of able to balance multiple sections of their agenda while achieving something all the same. Leadership. <laughs> I look for leadership in a political leader. Um, again, uh, as I said, not just somebody who talks the talk, but who, who walks the walk. And uh, I, think, I think our political leaders need to be more transparent, tougher. Um, sometimes they're going to have to make decisions that aren't maybe politically astute, but uh, that are around things that need to be done in the things that I've mentioned, environment, indigenous rights, uh, COVID, if it continues on, that sort of thing. I think there's a few qualities and I think, you know, everyone has their strengths and weaknesses, but personally, I think I'd like someone who's consistent, who's um, stable, so their word is their word. I know that there's a lot of, you know, 
lot of in politics there's a lot of things that are said and done um, but I think someone who's just you know consistent with their views um, and is stable then people you know people get what they vote for mm -hmm. instead of it turning out to be someone who you know turns out to have other opinions or other plans for where the country's headed. Somebody that's honest, uh, somebody that's intelligent, uh, somebody that's in touch with what's happening uh, with uh, the world, uh, with the you know, uh, with common people, uh, somebody who can uh, not up in a ivory tower uh, type of thing. Uh, although uh, I don't know if that's always uh, the case, but you know that's what I look for in, in a party leader. Somebody who's eloquent, uh, somebody who speaks very well, somebody whose ideas are in line with with the people. I mean, if, if, if it's possible, I don't know if it is possible, but you know, somebody who's willing to speak to the people and ready to act for the people. I think. Uh, that's, the, that's what I'd look for in a leader. Exercising your vote is one of your fundamental rights as a Canadian. But with so much going on around the world and the uncertainty of what will happen down the line, this election could be one of the most significant we've seen in a long time. Once again, we sent our cameras out to ask Canadians how this election could be critical in mapping out the months and years ahead. Our question. Why is this election important to you? That's a tough question. Um, it is important because, I mean, it does, it does give every Canadian the right to have a say, you know, or who they think is going to lead the country. But as far as um, when I look at parties, I don't judge by the party, I judge by the person. So I look at, um, when I look at a federal election, I also look close to home because it's who I send from here to Ottawa that is going to help make the decisions. I think every election should be important to every voter because it's going to dictate how our country functions for the next four years. Uh, so every election is equally important to me as the last. Hopefully maybe there's going to be a better balance in the parliament, uh, you know, where uh, it's not just one majority specifically, just, uh, you know, uh, being uh, in the uh, business of making decisions. Probably action on the, the climate, I suppose. Uh, it's been a lot of talk. The recent summit failed again, so it's, it's time to you know, get behind a plan and, and really do it this time. So, yeah, I'm gonna be voting for the party that I think will, will, will drive it instead of just talking about it. Well, I think leading during a pandemic is certainly nothing that anybody could have predicted, but I'm not thinking that the current leader did the best job of leading during a pandemic and I think that maybe a party that has learned a little bit from his mistakes might be a good idea. The political landscape is nightmarish to navigate as a, as a young man in today's world so uh, but at the same time it's also important to pay attention and hold our leaders accountable for what they're doing. It's time for change. Time for change and that we've seen what's going on the last 18 months. Are we happy? You know. I'm a lucky guy. I, I've lived a very good life in this country, but I've watched it in the last three or four years. The handouts really bother me because I come from a generation, get it done, get it done, go to work, get it done. I think all elections are important. Uh, you know, the way the world's going and the way it's how we come out of this and how the direction we will decide a lot um, over the coming years and especially with what's happening with the Indigenous, the treaties. Uh, Black Lives Matter, diversity, inclusion. Uh, this is going to set the tone for the kind of people in the kind of country we want to be moving forward. It's important with the economy and uh, as, a, as a, like a pensioner for like I live in low cost housing and stuff like that. It's been very helpful to me. Uh, I wouldn't mind as a pensioner we could use a little more money because uh, you know right now it's everything has gone up and we're all having it a little bit tough right now, so, but otherwise we're surviving. Well, they're all important to me. You know, as soon as I turned 18, I was able to vote. And, you know, and my mom made me want to read about it and look up, you know, read into everything you vote for. And, and um, so it's, it's always been important to me. You know, you want to, you want, if you get rid of your vote, um, you don't have a say. And I, I want to be able to have a say when you to stick up for you know what I believe in with with politics well I think it's a really like um, important year um, there's a lot of stuff going on like the health crisis and also the housing crisis and dealing with like um, climate change and stuff and so I think that 
It's really important that um, we choose somebody who will represent um, the voices of the people and um, their needs and without kind of like corporate interests and um, just making sure that the the average citizen is being represented. Why is it important? Because it could potentially uh, determine how we're going to be living in the next five to ten years. Do we want to stay in the current course of pandemic and, you know, uh, uh, economy and stuff. I felt like there's a lot of things that happened before the pandemic that we didn't resolve. So it's very important to uh, put this behind us and, and see what we get back on track. You know, we want jobs, obviously, immigration. Uh, I have kids, so you know the future of this country and their you know well-being is at stake. So there you go. I'm in Albertan. Uh, we need to get the Liberal Party out. We've been decimated out west and uh, we need some pipelines. I mean, it, our situation in Canada is so ridiculous, not having pipelines uh, with Line 5 trying to be enclosed and we're importing Saudi Arabian oil every day. It, it is so ridiculous in this country. We are almost committing suicide and it's just, it's appalling when you look at the other nations across the world, what they do to protect their own, uh, whether it's Norway or any of those that are oil countries that protect their own industries. What we do here, at every turn, uh, we've been uh, handcuffed with uh, producing some of the most ethical oil on the planet, which is, is, is mind-blowing. It's important to me because when you look at the current party in power, there were a lot of very important promises made that were later told, no, they're not important. Uh, example being electoral reform, which is incredibly important to everyone in this country. Um, we need people who are actually going to do what they say. We need people to be fair about what they're doing and actually be concerned with all Canadians, not just the select few in Ontario that uh, they really seem to placate. I understand it's a numbers game and you're really working towards where you're going to get the biggest, highest concentration of individuals, but us on the verges and edges of the country are really important too and we want to have our voices heard and we want to be seen and have our concerns addressed. I think every election is important to me. So it's it's our way to, it's our, it's, it's our way to, to voice what our opinions are. And, Obviously, if you don't vote, you have to keep your mouth shut. Thanks for watching this episode of Outburst on CPAC. If you have any comments about this show or any other show, you can find us on social media. You can also find us on our website at www.cpac.ca. I'm Glenn McGuinness, and on behalf of my colleagues at the Cable Public Affairs Channel, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.